Today is Good Friday, also known as Holy Friday. This is the day that we remember the crucifixion of our Savior, Jesus Christ. This is an extremely important day for the believer because it reminds us of a day that was dark, a day that was filled with despair and sadness, and yet God used that day to bring something good. The crucifixion of Jesus Christ is in the four synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And they all tell the same story with slightly different takes on it, but it's pretty much what happened to Jesus in those last days before he was on the cross. I'm gonna read out of the book of Mark, and also out of the book of Matthew, and then I'll go back to Mark. And we're going to start in Mark chapter 15, verses 33 through 47. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land until three o'clock. Then at three o'clock, Jesus called out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lima sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Some of the bystanders misunderstood and thought he was calling out for the prophet Elijah. One of them ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, holding it up to him on a reed stick so that he could drink. Wait, he said, let us see whether Elijah comes to take him down. Going to Matthew chapter 27, reading in verse 35 through 44. After they had nailed him to the cross, the soldiers gambled for his clothes, throwing dice, and they sat around and kept guard as he hung there. A sign was fastened above Jesus' head, announcing the charge against him. It read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right side and the other on his left. The people passing by shouted abuse, shaking their heads in mockery. Look at you now, they yelled at him. You said you were going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Well then, if you are the Son of God, save yourself and come down from that cross. The leading priests and teachers of religious law and elders also mocked Jesus. He saved others, they scoffed, but he can't save himself. So he is the King of Israel, is he? Let him come down from the cross right now, and then we will believe in him. He trusted God, so let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. Even the revolutionaries who were crucified with him ridiculed him in the same way. Going back to the book of Mark, chapter 15, verse 37. Then Jesus uttered another loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. When the Roman officer who stood facing him saw how he had died, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. Some women were there watching from a distance, including Mary Magdalene, Mary the son of James. They have been followers of Jesus and had cared for him while he was in Galilee. Many other women who had come with him to Jerusalem were also there. Verse 42, this all happened on Friday, the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath. As evening approached, Joseph of Arimathea took a risk and went to Pilate and asked for Jesus's body. Pilate couldn't believe that Jesus was already dead. So he called for the Roman officer and asked if he had died yet. The officer confirmed that Jesus was dead, so Pilate told Joseph that he could have the body. Joseph brought a long sheet of linen cloth. He then took Jesus' body down from the cross, wrapped it in the cloth, and laid it in a tomb that had been carved out of the rock. He then rolled a stone in front of the entrance. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where Jesus' body was laid. You know, as I read this account, lots of thoughts come to my mind, but one of the thoughts that come to my mind today is why do we call this day Good Friday? This was the day that the followers of Christ were defeated. This is the day that it seemed as if the enemies of Jesus 
They have triumphed over him. They have won this battle. Let me remind you that we look at this time and we know that Easter is coming. We can see that in hindsight, but during the time of the disciples, when they walked on this earth with Jesus, they felt in their hearts, I can only imagine the despair, the sense of loss, the sense of defeat. See, today we call this Good Friday because we recognize one simple thing, and this is the one theme I would hope that you would take from this, is that God brings good things out of bad situations. Have you ever had a bad circumstance, maybe a, a sickness, maybe the loss of a loved one? And maybe it happened a long time ago, maybe it's something that you thought you could never overcome, but through that circumstance, you realize that you were stronger. It made you better. It, it improved who you are. Your faith grew because you saw how God brought you through it. Think about those times in your past. Maybe it was years ago. Maybe it was just a year ago. Maybe it was just through this whole shutdown pandemic thing that you realize that God still has me. He is still on the throne. God brings good things out of bad circumstances. Amen. Matter of fact, Romans chapter 8, verse 28, it says, For we know that God causes everything, everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. Let that be something that sinks into your spirit right now. That whatever you may be going through, it may be perceived as something that is so bad, but when the, you read Romans 8, 28, and God says, I am working everything for your good. That is a verse to hold on to in the times when you don't know where you're gonna go. In the times when you feel like giving up, you can hold on to Romans 8, 28 and say, God, I know that this infirmity, I know that this situation, I know this relationship, this, this, all this stuff, it may seem like it's failing, it may seem like it's all falling apart, but God, I'm trusting that you are working this out for my good and I will hold on to you. You see, what happened to Jesus, it wasn't good but it did bring good results. You see, the religious leaders, they thought they were going to squelch an uprising. They thought they were going to silence a man. They thought they had a victory, but they were really fulfilling God's master plan. See, even in Mark chapter eight, Jesus predicts his death. Verses 31 through 38, it says, Jesus began to tell them that the Son of Man must suffer many terrible things and be rejected by the elders, the leading priests, and the teachers of religious law. He would be killed, but three days later, he would rise from the dead. As he talked about this openly with his disciples, Peter took him aside and began to reprimand him for saying such things. Jesus turned around and looked at his disciples, then reprimanded Peter. Get away from me, Satan, he said. You are seeing things merely from a human point of view, not from God's point of view. What does that tell us? Well, it tells us this. God is the ultimate chess player. And he's going to get checkmate no matter what game you play. So always hold on to that. Especially today, remember that, that God is the ultimate strategist. 
and he'll figure things out and he'll work things out for his glory one way or another. And it may seem on the surface, it may seem like we're losing the battle, but God wins the war. And in the end, we win. See, the disciples thought it was over. The disciples thought their savior was dead. They wrapped him up, they put him in a tomb, and put a big rock over it. And by everyone's standards, that was the end. But three days later, three days later, we received communion to remind us of the sacrifice of what Jesus did for us on that cross. He did not have to. As a matter of fact, he even asked God that if it was possible to let that situation pass him so that way he didn't have to die on the cross. But he ultimately said, God, it's not my will, but it's your will be done. It was through his death, his burial and resurrection that we now could have eternal life through Jesus Christ. He is the only way to eternal life, the only way to connect to the Creator. And it was through His sacrifice. So at this time, we will receive the bread, which represents His body, and the juice, which represents His blood. Let us receive the bread, it reminds us of His body that was laid down for our lives. this time we receive the cup which reminds us of the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for the forgiveness of our sins no longer are we separated from God but through his death we are truly connected receiving what he has done and who he is we are connected to our Heavenly Father let us receive the cup today Heavenly Father, we come to you today humbly, realizing, Lord, that there's many different things in our lives that keep us from you. There's sin in our lives that keep us from you. And Lord, you don't desire to be separated from us, but you desire to be connected to us, which is why you sent your Son, Jesus Christ. Today, Heavenly Father, we remember that sacrifice that was on that dreadful Friday. Today, God, we remember, Lord, how the disciples, Lord, were afraid, disheartened by what they were witnessing. Heavenly Father, let us be reminded in the times when we may feel those same emotions that we can trust you, that you will bring good out of a tough, difficult, or even perceived bad circumstance that you work all things for our good and for your glory. We thank you for the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. We commit to following you no matter what may happen. In Jesus' name, amen.